One day, someone's going to challenge your data. They will ask, how do you know this is accurate? If your answer is, well, the drone says so, you're in trouble. Because in this industry, accuracy isn't just a number, it's accountability. My name is Stefan Niculescu. I have been a land surveyor for over 20 years, and I've worked on projects all over the world, from high-rise buildings to mapping cities to infrastructure jobs that couldn't afford to get it wrong. And if there is one thing I have learned is this, if you can't explain, verify, and defend your data, you are not serving, you are gambling. Here is something that surprises a lot of people getting into drone surveying. Drone surveying isn't really about drones, it's about surveying. You can fly a 30,000 RTK drone, but without surveying principles, you're just collecting pretty pictures. Surveyors have rules, standards, checks, and balances, and drone surveys, they follow the same logic as the ground-based land surveys. So if you want to do it right, you've got to think like a surveyor, not a drone pilot. Now, don't worry, I'm not dropping a textbook on your desk. I'm not going into the history of land surveying, but you do need a few key principles because someone will question your work. And when they do, you need to say, here's my process, here's my evidence, here is why it's right. Let's talk about one of the biggest misconceptions, accuracy. Most of people think accuracy is whatever number the manufacturer prints on the spec sheet, one centimeter accuracy, and they take it as a face value. But here's the catch. Those numbers come from laboratory condition, perfect weather, ideal surfaces, zero interference. It's kind of like uh, car companies claiming 70 miles per gallon, but only if you're driving downhill with a tailwind. In real world, every part of the drone setup introduces tiny errors. RTK GNSS position error, IMU drift, gimbal wobble, sensor calibration, atmospheric distortion, surface reflectivity. Individually, this might seem small, but errors stack. And in a worst case scenario, what we call a perfect storm, a few of these stack in the wrong direction, and suddenly your data is off by way more than expected. That's why real surveyors don't promise a fixed number. They work within tolerances range, constantly checking, verifying, and minimizing errors. So how do you think like a surveyor? Surveyors don't guess, they verify. That means checking your drone survey using a second method, ideally one that is even more accurate. In practice, that means control points to help correct your data and checkpoints to help verifying your data. If your checkpoints fall within your target accuracy range, you're good. If not, something went wrong and you need to dig deeper. So what does this look in the field? Your main survey method will be drawn RTK positioning. That's fast, efficient, and powerful, but it still needs backup. Your check-in method should be longer, static GNSS measurements taken on the ground. These act like anchors, slow, but rock solid, they give you the confidence that your fast drone data is telling the truth. So when someone asks, how do you know this is accurate? You will have an answer, not just a number, but a process. Not just confidence, evidence. If you're unsure whatever your maps are accurate enough to hand it to your client, I do one-to-one -one sessions where I look at your drone, your process and your setup and fix what's holding you back. The link is in the description. Both methods, fast drone capture and slow ground control, rely on one critical piece, a solid source of corrections. And that's exactly what I will cover in my next video. Why using a base station might be the most reliable way to get accuracy your clients actually need. I will see you there.